Hey, it's Della. The Stay Home Crisis. That's the title of the next Della's Voice talk show. Join me on Friday at 9 p.m. as I speak to our expert guest, Dr. Ajam. Let's learn from him some simple tools that we can implement right away to improve our relationships during the social distancing. Please um, share this intro so that more people could benefit from watching the interview. That's Friday, 9 p.m., live on Facebook. Don't miss it. live with uh, Dr. Behrang Ajam. He is a coach, he is an author, um, he is a good friend, and um, he is my, actually my expert guest. Uh, and uh, once in a while, I have the pleasure and the opportunity to chat with him uh, on, on uh, Facebook Live. And tonight I decided to bring on the Instagram people so they can hear you, Behrang, they just can't see you. Uh, so um, we're talking about stay home crisis, um, it, which is impacting our relationships. And I wanted to chat with you tonight in bringing some tools and some techniques so that we can um, be helped in our in improving our relationships. Um, so. And there was a question, what type of a coach are you, Berang? There's a question on Instagram. Yeah, you know, I do transformational coaching and actually the method I use is turbo coach, means that we have results very fast. In order to have results very fast, you have to be very motivated. That's why I have, I work with a select group of coaches and clients because to my experience, everybody wants to change, but nobody wants to change really. <laughs> so there are just a few people who go to that place. And I say that based on experience because in many occasions when, you know, most of my clients are people who have been working with other coaches or even psychotherapists, other uh, consult counselors or consultants in other areas and haven't had <clears throat> the desired uh, results. They didn't have the result that they wanted. So my assumption is that they are motivated already because they have gone through so many uh, methods and you know people, and now they're working with me. So my assumption is that, it used to be my assumption that they really want to change. But just a couple of years ago, I came to the realization, I realized that not necessarily, Many people work with different people just to make sure that nobody can help them. So in an initial interview, I determine if the person who is going to be working with me has the determination and motivation to make that change happen. And if, if, that's, the, if that's the case, perfect. We will work together. And I can guarantee that you will see some change, some substantial change, only in three sessions, no more. And Otherwise, your money back. If you have no change. If you are not happy with it, your money back. And I am, again, fortunate to say that it has never happened. So that's what I do. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now, what, why are we talking about this crisis today, Ben? Uh, let me phrase it this way. First of all, as an intro introduction, this mm, thing that you are, I mean, so many people are calling crisis, is so big that there is a prediction that after this uh, coronavirus thing has passed, we have we will be seeing something like uh, a triple number, triple increase in the number of divorce and breakups and stuff like that. It is something that has been predicted. Wow. So, and it is scientific predict prediction. It's not just saying something to say. And as you said, People are living together, spending more time together, and now they are seeing things. Some of them are new things. They didn't expect that. And some of them have has been there for a long time. They just didn't want to talk about it. Now, I would like to say that if 
we can call it a relationship crisis. It is not something that we are going into it. Whenever there is a crisis, it has been there for a long time. Yes. All that this quarantine has helped is to bring it out. Yes. Now we have no excuse to deny it. Now we have no way to hide it. We have to face it. That's why it's now showing itself. So if you see couples, friends, anybody who is now in what you call relationship crisis, I just want to uh, remind you that the crisis is not new. The relationship has been in crisis for a long time. Nobody wanted to admit that. Well, I you're saying there's... The first, the very first... Sorry to interrupt. Ahead, so, so I guess in a sense, you're saying they were pre-existing conditions. <laughs> And the crisis, Absolutely. and so Absolutely. ever since, yeah. right? And ever since Corona happened, they've so they're just they're just getting um, worse because we already have those issues. Now they're building and they're building and they're building. Yes, yeah, and you know, the more time you give it, and the less you talk about it, and the less you want to solve it, it grows. Just the yeah. way we grow, our problems grow. Our problems together will grow too. So the thing is that the first step in solving any problem, any problem in the world, is to admit that there is a problem. Yeah. As long as we are denying the existence of that kind of crisis, that kind of problem that is there, there is no way that we can solve it. There is no, that, there is no way that we want to do something about it. I would like to invite each and every one of you, if you feel something is going wrong going on that you don't like it if you feel that there is something wrong and you don't like it i invite you here tonight to take the first step admit that there is a problem mm -hmm. then you will have we will talk about some tools some methods some things that you want to be thinking about something that, that you will be doing to change the situation but the third time I say, unless you admit there is something to change, unless you admit there is some problem, there will be no solution. Well, so that's with everything, I think, in life. With that's yeah. with every single issue, every single problem. We first have to admit it, then we can uh, start doing something about it. Okay, good. Now, go ahead. Yeah, I say that because you know, in many cases, I have seen that. You know, I'm like job is working with people and sometimes it takes time to just have them accept that you know i am in a bad shape mentally or relationship wise financially health wise many things or just one thing can be wrong with me but i don't want to accept it unless i accept it there will be no solution now let's say i know there is something going on and i don't like it I, there is something in the relationship that I'm in. Let's say I have a family and there is something wrong with the relationship between me and my spouse, between me and my children, and I want to change it. Now, the change doesn't happen just like a snap, right? But if you do what is to be done consistently, you will get results much sooner than you expect. Obviously, there is resistance against any change in the world. When you want to change things in your family, there will be resistance. Not only you, as the person who wants to do the change, have some resistance to the things that you're going to do. But also people you are living with have that kind of resistance. Why? Because they know you this way that you are. If I am a person that, you know, try to solve every problem with anger, with throwing things, with, I don't know, breaking plates. You know, I know people who do that. Or if yelling. I am yelling, you know, there are so many ways, a variety of solutions. And there, there are actually solutions for a very short period of time, but they are short period solutions anyway. So if I yell, nobody gets close to me and I'll, people will just, Leave me alone for a while. Mm -hmm. Next time, another yelling. 
another yelling. And gradually, the whole system of the family is falling apart. You just don't see it. Now, I want to make that change. People don't know new, the new me because I'm not yelling. And I have seen that, and my clients tell me that. You know, the first time that I don't yell, my children just look at me because they were expecting a loud voice, but it doesn't come up. Mm -hmm. The first time that I give compliments to my spouse, she just looks at me like this. She can't believe that. These words, these sentences, statements are coming out of my mouth. Yes, they are. They will be surprised. They may think that I don't know this guy because I know how to deal with his yelling, but I don't know how to deal with him when he's not yelling. That's I don't true. know how, how to deal with him when he's pissed off all the time. But I don't know how to deal with him when he's giving me compliments. It's very surprising. Yes. So whatever you're going to do, keep it going. And then the new thing will be the new norm. We want to make just the way you're yelling. I mean, you're, yelling. You're, you're not yelling, but you know, let's say you're yelling and uh, all the things that you have been done has been the norm for a long time. Now you can change the norm and you can start a new norm. And a new norm can be something that actually makes the relationship with family firm and friendly, if that is something you want. I know that it's some, something obvious to say, yeah, of course I want it. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's say everybody wants it, but let's make sure that. So first, admit it. Second, don't be afraid to go through it, even though you will feel surprised yourself even everybody around you is surprised and they look at you with funny look at, in, in their face, just keep going. Be After consistent. a while, just a couple of weeks, mm -hmm. be consistent. You will yeah. make a new norm. That will be the norm. So yeah. don't, don't, uh, don't quit. Now, what to do? It's all about the angle that we are looking at things. Just... About two weeks ago, I had the same discussion in Farsi with my audience on yeah. Instagram with uh, a, a friend, a friend of mine who has marketing company, and we do uh, Instagram lives sometimes. And the the plan was to provide some uh, methods, something that they can, something that people can do. And I, the first thing I asked them is that. I know that all of you have a cell phone in your hand and there is a good chance that the last thing you do in the day before you go to sleep is watching something on the cell phone, on Instagram, on Facebook, watching a video on YouTube, discussing something with a friend, exchanging messages. I want you to do this. There is a note application on every type of cell phone, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, there's a notes part of it. You know, you can write notes. Yeah. Even on Telegram, you can have something as a note for yourself, right? I want you, I want to invite you to write three to five decisions that you made throughout the day. Just decision. So I don't, I don't wait, a second. wait a second. I'm going to repeat that just in case um people didn't hear so you're saying uh three to five decisions that you have made through your day yes write them down or put them in your yes. phone in your phone uh, type yes. in your phone okay three to five decisions we have made through the day why is that you see before i say why the decision can be doing something or the decision not to do something. I decided not to yell. I decided not to uh, make that phone call. I decided not to do this or I decided to do this. So all that I'm saying is that whether you did something or you decided not to do something, both of them are decisions and both of them are act, acts, do or not. I want you to write them. Why? Because once you write your decisions at the end of the day, you will find out how your decisions are affecting your life. 
I hear it all the time from my clients that, you know, the life is happening to me as if I am just as it, like a leaf, the wind. Life comes in and takes me around and as if I don't have any uh, choice. I couldn't, I, I couldn't help it. You always can help it. I couldn't do anything else. You always can do something else. I just want to remind you by writing your decision, how much control you have over your life and how your decisions affect your environment. I, this, I saw something, I was upset. And as usual, I decided to yell. No, you know, it comes to me without thinking. I don't decide it. Actually, you decide it. Write can't it down. Help it. That's what. That's why I hear. I can't. No, they say yeah. You can't mm -hmm. help it. That's that's mm -hmm. my point. You can't help it. Mm -hmm. So write all those things down, and you will just see how much control you have over your life. How what you are doing is just reviewing your life for the same day, mm -hmm. right? So. This is one thing that I want to invite you to do. And with that, you know, instead of just going through, don't blame yourself. And at this stage, in the first stage, don't try to even change it. Just look at them, look at what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. This is your uh, mark card, what, whatever they give in the schools to, to people for that. Report, for students, a report for, card, for, a for report one day. card, yes. Okay. Yes. Report card, yes, exactly. Oh, yeah, right. call report card, yes. You, because you I don't have a kid. Yeah, so you make those decisions um, without noticing them. Once you start writing down, okay, today, today I made the decision uh, to stay calm. Today yes. I made the decision uh, to, um, to, to eat um, a piece of fruit instead of a donut. Today, or I, I decided to have, to have that donut, you know. I'm, or, or I decided to have that stage, donut, yeah. you're right, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But once you write those decisions that you have made down, it's like you are being accountable. And yeah. at the same time, you realize that those decisions that you made were in your control. Mm -hmm. You're the mm -hmm. one who made those decisions. This is so good, Berai, because this brings you back in the driver's seat of your life absolutely absolutely yeah okay that, Go ahead. yeah that's the point the whole point of it is that you feel how much you're in control yes things don't happen you know the life doesn't happen and if we have the feeling that the life is happening to us there is something wrong because as people as a human being we have control over life we have choices but sometimes we try or maybe we prefer to forget that we have so many choices everything every step that we take is a choice we are somehow trying to forget that i want us to remind ourselves that i am in control by doing things or not doing things both of them are decisions and i'm in control now okay. that is one thing it doesn't seem to be related directly to your relationship at home but it is once you do it, you will see how much it is related to your relationship. You just see the report card, you see how it is affected. Now, that one is something you do with yourself. It seems to be strange a little, but at least it is you and yourself. You have that note, you don't have to show it to anyone. So it is by yourself. Mm -hmm. But there is something else that I want to invite to do with others. And it is a two or three stage uh, action. I will tell you what I want at the end, and then I will tell you how to break it down into a stage. What I want, I'm, what I'm inviting you to do is to, that is actually a statement from a gentleman who is a guru of human resources, HR, and he says it into management, but I have uh, applied it to um, family interaction. I want you to arrest people in your family while they are doing a good thing and give them compliment right away. Oh boy. <laughs> Arrest them. Oh, I saw that you did that. I don't know, you made your bed this morning. That is awesome. I saw that you did that. That was very good that you did this. That did, see, 
He makes that statement and I love it. Arrest them. Okay. And so give them hang on, hang on. Cause this is, this is, this is good. Okay. We always catch people, especially our, our loved ones doing things we don't approve of. Like we catch them. Oh, like you didn't do the bed. Oh, you, you um, left your dis dishes. Oh, you, you, um, you know, you, you didn't empty the, the, the dishwasher. You're right. We never catch our loved ones in a good act. So you're saying catch them while they're doing something good. If they did something good, catch them and actually say it. That's he good. Actually uses the, he uses the word arrest them. As and if he says arrest them. Doing something. <laughs> <laughs> arrest them while they are doing the right thing and give them <laughs> arrest and give them a compliment. Now, as you said, and that was a very uh, powerful statement that we always do that the opposite way. Yes. We have trained our eyes to find a flaw in everything. Just the way when we look at the report card of our children, and that happened to me when I was a child. You know, the report card is full of A plus, A plus, 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 then there's a B or C, and everything is forgotten. That's what happened number, here? That's my yeah. Yes. Is oh. it, you know, it's uh, casts its shadow on everything. Oh, I see one B. Oh, you didn't see 10 A pluses? You just saw one B or C? We do so, that. See, after, you know, we have been trained after a while to, to find flaws in everything. Now, we see that when in house, our spouse is taking care of children, very good almost flawlessly. I say almost because sometimes something goes out and then we catch them, we arrest them at the time that they are doing something that we don't like and we give them that bad words. Bad oh, you see, you are so careless. You know, we do that I all the time. I'm so guilty of this, man, right now, as you're saying this, <laughs> I'm so guilty of this. Honestly, because you're so right, you know? Oh my goodness. My husband can do everything right all day long. All right. Okay? Then, now we are talking. Yes, the one, th the one thing he doesn't do the way I want, that's the one thing I mentioned. Not the other million things he's done right all day to make my yeah. life, um, you know, comfortable. I just catch him in the act of not doing the one thing he didn't do um, the way I wanted to. This is so good, Berang. I love this. Okay. This is going to bring know, a lot of awareness. And I know that it is not easy to do, but before I break it down into stages that you can take, I mean, you may, can, you may be able to do it right away, but for some people, it is not easy. Just have this psychology principle for it. You cannot change the behavior of people but giving them feedback on what you don't want them to do. People will not change by, change by saying, don't do this, don't do this, don't do this, because they don't know what to do. Now, psychology teaches us that if you want to change the behavior, give enforcement, give feedback on what you want to happen more. So if you want someone to have an A or B on that mark for your children or something that you like, if you give them the feedback on what you like, you will see definitely that is proven that that behavior will repeat because every time the person does this, there's a positive feedback. So he or she will do it again and again and again. Yes. It's enforcement, yeah. It's, it's called in psychology, yes. Right. It, it makes total sense. As you're talking, I'm going to log into Facebook because I know there are some people watching there and I want to see if there are any questions, okay? Sure. Um, so, so far, to, just to, just to um, get us um, a little bit of, um, you know, point form. Number one. Number I, one, write I your decision. That there is a problem. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right? I think that there is a problem, yeah. Number two, you said, um, be consistent, right, in doing it different. Yeah. Okay. Number three, you said 
arrest your loved one in the process of doing something right, something that you liked. And give them a compliment. And, and give, give them a compliment. compliment. So right acknowledge. Yeah. Acknowledge. Okay. All right. Okay. Um, keep going, please. I, I am I am going on here. Um, right. And I want to make sure that I see if anyone's left us a message here. Okay. So that is the psychology principle. Yes. We're good? Yes, we're good. Okay, good. Oh, yes. Yeah, so see, like De Debbie says, uh, we are all so guilty of this. <laughs> right? All right? of us have been doing yes. that for a long, long time. Yes. I, I love this because it brings a certain amount of, of awareness, Berang, when we talk about stuff like this, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. I okay. know it makes it clear. You know, clearance is clearance on what we want to do and clearance on what we are actually doing is the best gift someone can receive. The, the reason why I want you to write what your decisions at the end of the night, what you have been doing or you decided not to do, is that it makes it clear how much control I have. Then, second stage, I want to catch people, arrest them at the time of doing the right thing and give them feedback. Now, I gave you the uh, psychological principle for it, but how to do it actually, it's, sometimes it's not easy to implement right away. So if you can't say the compliment, at least see the thing that is being done very well. First stage is, training your ears to find it okay see it don't say anything don't give it a compliment don't give it a positive feedback no problem at least train yourself to see it and after a while maybe you want to train yourself to now give the compliment and when you do that that is actually the time that the behavior of the other party starts to change now we always say i will wait until someone else does something good, and then I will, if you, if you behave, I will behave. You start your behaving from yourself. And I mean, you cannot change anybody without that kind of interaction. Actually, it is not possible to start change from out there. They always say in Buddhism, change comes from within. within. So one, yes. you, when you try to change your eyes, the way you see and train your eyes to see the good in everybody, the good that they already have, and we know that everybody has it, instead of focusing on the things that we don't want, things start to change. So first stage, train your eyes to see the good in the world. And part of that world is the people who are living with you. And I guarantee that. At the time you start giving that kind of feedback, things will change tremendously in your life. See, it, this is something that can be guaranteed. Just start catching people and giving them a compliment. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> look at it as a challenge. Do it one day for one day and see what happens. First day, they will look at you like this, surprise. Oh, this guy didn't have habit of giving the compliment to anyone he always wanted to find flaws and if you want you know it's been said that ask and you'll be given ask for flaws ask for bad things and you'll be given because whatever we look for we will find that is the law of attraction that's the law of life right yeah. now let's train ourselves to ask for and look for the good in people and in the world and that's awesome Look, so, look, at, look at it like a challenge. So I'm just thinking uh, what it would make me feel like if someone gave me a compliment. For example, if my husband mm -hmm. gave me a compliment, um, how, how would I feel? How, of course, if he acknowledged me <laughs> on something, you right, you know what I mean? Like if I was acknowledged for my cooking, I'd feel really good about that and I'd probably yeah. cook more, yeah. right? I, yeah. I, I'd like to make him happy, but if if I if I get instead uh, complaining, you know, it's too salty or if it's not it doesn't have enough salt, then 
I don't feel good about that. I don't want to, I'm not going to make an effort anymore. So it's just so normal. Oh, so normal, so simple. Yeah, it's just, it's so simple. It's yeah. just a change in the, the way we look at it. And have in mind, when you, when people around you do not give compliment, but they always give feedback on the flaws, when you think about it, you see that underneath, on the subconscious, you have come to the conclusion that, you know what, I cannot make these people happy. So whatever, I will quit. I will quit even trying to cook better. I will quit even trying to uh, help uh, in, the, uh, in the house chores. I will quit trying to do things because whatever I do, they'll not be happy. And this happens in many cases. I know that cultures are different. I'm right now, I'm talking about Farsi speaking culture. In, in many cases that I have been working with, sometimes mm, the lady in the house, has the habit of not showing that she likes something. It has the habit of showing that you will not be able to make me happy. Whatever you do, and you know, one of my uh, masters once said, people, guys die to feel that they can make their woman happy. They are ready to do whatever it takes to do, mm -hmm. but they have to see it also. Yes. So if you try one year, two years, for 10 years you have tried and you cannot feel her happy, any guy will quit. And once a guy, and the same applies to the other side too, you know, there's no difference. I'm just saying that because, you know, sometimes I see it's more prominent in some cultures. Because once you see that you cannot the other person happy, after a while you quit. And at the time that you quit, trying you go you slip into the state of indifference the other side i mean the opposite of love is not hate the opposite of love is indifference as long as you hate someone you still have some mental connection with them you are still having some kind of emotion towards them but indifference everything is wiped out whatever i do i can make her or him happy so why do i try whatever, let, let go. That's when we see that crisis. The crisis is there. I want to say that even if there are arguments, it's a good sign. A couple who argue still have, they can be safe. They're communicating. <laughs> That's They're communicating. Right? Yeah, right. yes. In, yeah, it's in a negative way, but still communicating. Mm -hmm. But there is a point that they quit impressing each other even arguing, you know, give, trying to make things better. When people quit trying to make things better, that's the end of it. That is another process. It will need some more professional, you know, cons uh, counseling and something like that. They, they will need more professional help. Yeah. What I'm saying now is that if you are still that kind of arguing, that kind of talking, that kind of communication, as you said, there is, it's easier. And these are the ways to do it. Give each other positive feedback. First stage, train your eyes to see it. Second stage, say it. And don't be shy to say it, even if you have. If you are someone who hasn't been giving compliment for 20 years, no problem. It is always start. a start point, a starting point for, yeah. any, for everything. You can start after 20 years and save the family. And, you know, I... I really guarantee that. Just try it for one day and come here underneath that video. Tell us what happened because I know that things will happen that you even did, you couldn't expect and you couldn't even imagine. I know that it happened. So, and I mean, this is this. It's like anything else. You start at first, it's hard, you're right. But as you do it more often, you're consistent doing it, it gets easier and easier. Before you know it, you may be paying compliments every day. Yeah. Um, and, and life gets sweet, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. we're not just talking about cup uh, with your spouse. We're talking about just any relationship at any home. Any relationship, your yeah. Kids, yeah. With your kids. Parents. You know, kids die to receive that kind of compliment, that kind of feedback. 
but sometimes we just deny their right to have that confidence. Mm -hmm. See, we don't want to give them because I have seen that if I give them the compliment, if I be positive, they think that they can disobey me. They can do whatever they want. Bad news. They are already doing whatever they want. You are out of the control system. There is, you, you, cannot, you, you are not controlling them anymore. They just don't let you know. And you have just shut your eyes. If you have been in, in a piece of mood for a very long time, for many years, I just want to give you the bad news that things are out of your control, but you just don't know about it. Open your eyes and you see that, you know, things are not very, very good. Mm -hmm. How to make it good? You want to change. Don't expect your kid change. Don't expect your spouse change. Change comes from within. You start and the world will change. Um, That's so I, I saw I saw this happen in my own life with my teenage yeah. son, yeah. and uh, uh, I got to tell you, um, we didn't have a very good relationship. As a matter of fact, I thought I thought we did. Um, it's like you said, I, mm. I I was oblivious, but it wasn't until I started noticing all the good things he did and actually telling him that our relationship changed and one day he actually told me that I that I had changed he said mom you're you're really nice now like you used to be really mean <laughs> before. Really nice. so it was really nice you know it was really nice to notice um, to be noticed to be acknowledged so I totally get this. I mean, um, kids, kids are so smart. They watch yeah. you, you know, they, they watch us and they, they, uh, they understand so much more than we give them credit. Um, right. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay. So what else? Let, let's keep going. Cause yeah. we're running out of just one more thing. I believe that when your kid told you, you have changed in a good way. Now you are more motivated to be better and better. You see, this is, this is how it works. You give the compliment, the feedback, and then you receive the feedback and the circle goes on and on in a good way. You give more, you receive more. You give more, you receive more. And it is getting better and better. It never goes bad. It's always getting better. It is happiness, it is joy. The joy just grows. The joy doesn't go down. It just, it just increases in the world, right? And the third thing that I want to talk about is in line with second thing. Now, maybe you want to, you are in the first stage and you want to uh, train your eyes first. On the note that you are writing your decisions, after those decisions, after the decision, I want to invite you to write three to five things that were very good and your eyes could see it. Write them down. Don't just circle them in your head. That's good, but not enough. Once you write them, it will manifest. So today, I just noticed that, you know, the weather, it was, it was, it was sunshine and I liked it. I'm just tra trying to train my eyes. And my kid did that, and I liked it. The, uh, the lunch was very good, and I liked that. You know, those simple things that we always ignore, you know, life is so serious, and, you know, these, don't, these small things don't matter. All those small things are shaping our lives. Every single one of them matter. And I want to invite you to write, can train your eyes to see more and more of them. That's what happens. And then when you have trained your eyes, then you can talk about it. One day you'll see yourself talking about how um, it's good to go out and have a walk. Oh, have a walk. Let's go for a walk. And you haven't been walking with your spouse or your kids for a long time. Just because you are seeing it, things start to change. Don't quit. Give it time two, three weeks. If it is something that you don't think that you will be consistent with, look at it as a challenge. Let's have this challenge for three days. 
decisions, positive things, and if you can, give the compliment. And things start to change. I guarantee that. I want to see your comments underneath that you know, video one week, three days, two days from now. And I know that things are changing. Okay, so that's that is basically. Simple. That's very yeah. simple. Okay. So you that's want very simple. To yeah. a challenge, okay, for three days. Three days. For, for three days. days. Yes. Not for three days. Um, you want us at the end of the day to write down three to five decisions we made that day. Yeah, exactly. Okay, whatever those decisions were. Um, then the second thing you want us to do is you want us to compliment um, our loved ones. Right, right. Catch, exactly. them, you catch can. them in the catch act. Them. Yeah. Catch them in the act of doing something good right. uh, and then compliment them. Exactly. So acknowledge them. And the third thing you want us to do is write down uh, two. Mm -hmm. three, three to five things that were good. You just notice, good. yeah, you just notice good things, weather, lunch. I don't know. I was driving. I mean, this quarantine, may, maybe you are not driving that uh, that much anymore. But, you know, I was doing something and things went very well. Actually, I didn't expect that, but things are going very well. Write them down so that you can repeat to yourself and train yourself to notice good things. Notice the good in the life. And the more you see it, the more you will see and the more it appears in your life. There are many things that, you know, we don't acknowledge, we are not grateful for. That is actually called a grateful gratefulness practice. The more grateful we are, the more we receive and see good things. And this is something that you have heard so much that you think that it is something cheap. I know that many couples pre prefer that I say, you know, I have a pill, you have it with a glass of water and it will solve all your problems and ah. the price is five thousand dollars <laughs> and i know that you will do your best whatever you can to have that five thousand and pay it to me so that i can give you the pill but that pill first of all doesn't exist if if, if something like that would exist you no know, pharmaceutical companies would make it and sell it to us and make even more money so that that doesn't uh, exist but you know, all these things are free. All it takes is 10 minutes of your time at the end of the day and opening your eyes. Now, some people say, I don't have 10 minutes for myself. Really? You don't have 10 minutes for yourself? What the life? You know, what kind of life? Yes. That you don't have 10 minutes for yourself. Yes. So you want to think seriously about your life if you don't even, you don't have even 10 minutes to spend for yourself. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, on your cell phone, writing down three to four decisions and three to four, uh, three to five decisions, two to five good things that you found. You don't have time for this. Come on, I, I, I believe you have. Do it for three days only, and let's talk. Three days, three days, three days only. Yeah. Or three days. Okay. Yeah. Again. And the good thing is that today is the first of May. It's first of May, so you can do it for first of May. Basically, is done. Two, three, four. So on 4th of May, come back, write down what you did underneath this video, which will be available on Facebook. Let us know what you did. Let us know what happened. Even if it didn't work, if, it, if you had bad feedback, let us know. But I would say, you know, there's a very good chance that things will change for better. I, I believe that. So I want to say hi to some people who are watching um, uh, on Facebook and Instagram. So um, Debbie, uh, Debbie Wilcox is watching, uh, Phil is watching us, Neda is watching us, uh, Piruz is watching us, Mr. Robert J. Moore is watching us. I interviewed um, um, Mr. Mr. Moore uh, yesterday. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. a fantastic guy. Uh, on Instagram, uh, there's a bunch of people that are watching and uh, I want to say hi to everybody. Okay, so we've got a challenge coming from um, Dr. Adjam, okay, to better uh, our relationships. So number yes. one, 
write down at the end of the day, write down three to five decisions you made that day. Just write them down. Okay, today I decided to go for a walk. Today I decided to smile at a stranger. Today I decided, um, I decided to close my mouth when I was going to complain. That's a good decision. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but even if it is something that is not new, you know, I want you to just to watch your decisions. I, I'm, not, I'm not, at this stage, you don't even need to change anything. Just write them down. Whatever right. you do or you decide not to do, just write them down. This stage, just look at them. Okay. Just like the second part, which is two to five things that you see that are good happening, happen to your uh, life, happen in your life. I don't want you to change right now. For three days, just watch. Just watch yourself making decisions and watch other world when things are happening in it and good things are happening in it for three days only. Okay. And let me tell you one thing. The quarantine is going to end. You know, Sooner or later, we are all going back to normal life. Mm -hmm. It takes time, but we'll, and you know, we still have time to practice this while we are together at home. So make the best use of the time that you are spending together because one week from now, maybe you are at work and everything goes back to normal, the bad normal that you didn't like, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes, maybe you say, yeah, it's a relief. I don't see them anymore. I don't see my spouse for 12 hours a day. I just see her or him for two hours. But it doesn't mean that thing. You have time. You know the method. Use it to make things really, really better in reality, not just by ignoring each other and not talking to each other, because that is not real. That is just, you know, that's elephant in the room. Nobody wants to talk about it. You know? just, it's there. You just don't want to talk about it. I'm taking I'm taking so, you on on this challenge. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna yeah. do this, and I encourage, I, I encourage everybody to do it. Yes. Because uh, yeah. okay, nothing nothing will change unless we change something now. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah. all right. Yeah. So you so again so you said you said the first thing was three to five decisions we made that day. Write them down. So it doesn't matter what kind of decisions at first, just write them down, just so you can notice, you can be aware. Number two, okay? Catch your loved one in the act of doing something good and actually acknowledge them yes. for it. Yeah. Say it, say yeah. it. Oh, look, you washed the dishes. Oh, look, the bed. You look made. gorgeous today. You, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Yeah, it's just, you know, simple, right? Compliment. Yeah. Okay. Uh, how many? How many? You what, know, you have a number? As much as you can. But but if it is the challenge, I want you to do it at least once for each day. Give one compliment. You know, that's simple. You can't go less than one because less than one is zero and doesn't exist. Just give one compliment a day for two days. One just each one day. compliment. Just okay. One, just one okay. compliment. Okay, so Sherry says, I've already started by working out today. So she she made the decision yeah. to work out today. Absolutely. She did kickboxing actually. It doesn't with... change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. And the yeah. third thing is writing three things. Writing, writing three to five things on your notes, right? That the good things. So one is the list of decisions. One is giving the compliment. Third is write the good things that you liked today it happened today and you like them good things that you are trying to train your eyes to see more of them anything that was good was it the, was it weather was it the sunshine was it my the, coffee my coffee taste coffee what you know, there are so many things that happens every day and there are so many good things that happen we just have trained ourselves to see the bad things now we want to train our eyes to see good things why writing it because then it is it manifests it, it takes it gets the shape of it don't just you know it is not enough to circle it in your head I right, yes i was thinking about it i counted three decisions write it on yourself you know I did it is so on. easy 
it's so easy you can't say i cannot do it mm -hmm. only thing that you will keep you from it that when you say i don't want to do it. otherwise technology helps you to have a better life take notes and to know yourself that is simple technology if you want it can do it it's a very easy and simple exercise start with tonight but you know come back on 4th of may and let us know about it yes i really want to Okay, I, I, I will, I will let you know for sure how it went for me. Sure. I'm taking you on this challenge. As a matter of fact, I might just do a reminder every night. Yes, for people yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that's awesome. yes, yeah. yes, just to exactly. get them started on something. Right. Um, this is awesome, Ben. I thank you so much. I can never get enough of our talks. You are awesome um you you always have such an easy simple way of explaining things and you always um, offer such great tools such um, practical tools uh i want to thank you i really really appreciate you um want to say hi to some people who are uh on instagram salim hi um Sena, uh sherry ahmed um, obsessions, Reza, um, <laughs> um, obsessions, fashion accessories. Uh, oh, that, I see. Okay. Yes, Great. that's the name of a business. Uh, Great place. Uh, they're Great. on. Uh, okay. They have a website. They have beautiful st stuff. Like everything I wear is from obsession fashion fashion accessories. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god uh anyways thank you so much for joining us uh today everybody we'll have you back on here Beren, because i i just love these talks if people need yeah, to get in I touch with you um you can be reached uh, on facebook um you're you are tagged on this post and i want to thank you um any last words before we say good night Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure talking to you and it's always a pleasure to be in uh, contact and touch with um, your audience. I follow you on your uh, every night, that gratefulness meditation that you do every night. And I saw that I know that you have been doing it for, for many days, for many nights, per se. You sit in there at 11 p.m. and get us ready for a good night's sleep. So. Thank you so much for all you do to make this uh, world a better place using the technology, using You're the welcome. things that <laughs> it's are my available. Pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> my pleasure. Thank you. And thank you as well for everything you do. Uh, thank you, everybody who does something positive to bring light into the world during this extreme times when we need each other, yeah. uh, when we need to support each other and get through this. Um, so with that, uh, thank you again for tuning in to Della's Voice, everybody on Instagram and on Facebook. Thank you, Ben Rang. And Beautiful. this is Della's Voice, hoping to spark your soul. Good night. Good night. Every single person in this world has a superpower. It's what makes us unique. It's what makes us super special. It's what allows us to bring positive impact into the lives of the people around us. To talk about the superpowers um, allows us to be helpful to others. It allows us service. To talk about what we can do best brings positivity into the world. To keep that away, to keep that hidden, it's a disservice 